Well, I'm right back at you with another one, none other than O Block Sherrod, O Block Sherrod. I would say that one more time, O Block Sherrod, and we would be remiss if we did not put a R.I.P. in front of his name. So we will, R.I.P. O Block Sherrod, R.I.P. O Block Sherrod, man. And today we got the FOIA report, the leaked FOIA report. We will be going through it. So if you have not done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button it keeps me motivated and it keeps me wanting you know to feel good about bringing these cases to you guys and reading these cases and, and, and so forth you know um i definitely enjoy doing it so man just thank you guys for riding with me but we're going to go ahead and get started man let's jump into this but the first document we have is an original a chicago D police department excuse me original case incident report and the incident is a aggravated handgun battery 041A. Occurrence location 64 Redacted South Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Chicago, Illinois. Sidewalk 303. Occurrence date February 16th, 2012. 184600 hours. Name of victim Liggins Sherrod C. Residence is redacted. Beat numbers is redacted, excuse me, but we'll go over to the demographics. It is a male, he is a male black. Redacted, brown eyes, black hair, braids, hairstyle, light brown complexion, age, 19 years, date of birth. The day in the month is redacted, but the year is not at 1992. And he has an identification of an other type that is redacted. We have witnesses and the name and residence of the witnesses. Both witnesses uh, on this page are redacted, but the date of birth and race are not. So we have two black individuals date of birth years is uh, 1970 for the first one and 1987 for the second one witness the next page we have uh, uh, the of the incident report we have the notifications that get sent out once um, there is a crime detected so we have a narrative here and we're going to read that ev number 14352 in summary responding officers responded to an oemc call of a person shot at the above location upon or upon return re, oh excuse me upon responding officers arrival sherrod liggins victim and complainant was laying on redacted on the sidewalk with a gunshot wound redacted unresponsive it was later learned that the victim had redacted wound Victim was taken by CFD ambulance number 14 to Cook County Hospital with BT313 following. Responding officers spoke to redacted, male, redacted. Responding officers then, through the security camera systems, observed the victim leaving Swisher and Sweet Store, at which time he was shot. BT388 spoke to redacted. At the time of this report, the victim redacted at Cook County Hospital, BT-300, and they list all the officers on that scene at that time. Scrolling down through the next page, we are getting into the homicide case folder. And the first document we have there is an inventory document. And just, just br browsing through the inventory document, looking for anything that stands out to us. Um, they received an arrest report for a person and they wanted a rap sheet for ligands excuse me, there. and just a lot of inventory documents yeah, video maybe some video surveillance as well we'll go back and check that out sorry about that yep All right, and the next document we have is a progress uh, supplement, case supplementary report, a progress report within the case supplementary report. And in this progress report, we have number of victims listed, but we have a number of offenders for, which is interesting. And we have a reporting officer, which is circled. Um, I assume the original officer circled this, who uh, wrote this document. So. It is circled William Sullivan for reporting officer August 16, 2012. And this is a field investigative report. And of course, it lists the victim, Sherrod C. Liggins, male black, 19, date of birth, 
redacted month and day. Um, the year is not 1992 and his residence is redacted. We read his description above earlier and we're going down his um, gang information listed criminal organization is redacted as well as gang identifiers redacted. Suspects are unknown, unknown. Uh, male black years and I guess that's unknown as well as blank item used weapon wearing top black jacket bottom beige cargo pants yes that's the gist of the um, description of the subjects that the suspects that they have male black years they don't know male black years male black years so that's four suspects with um, well, they do know what two of them are wearing. So for the last suspect, they have a top gray and black jacket, bottom blue jeans. And for the first suspect, they had black jacket, bottom beige cargo pants. But the other two, they don't have that. <coughs> so scrolling down for the victim's injuries, gunshot wound, handgun, 45 caliber handgun, extent serious, injured by offender, CFD responding unit, ambulance 14. And they have blood swabs, blood card, DVDs of video footage from pod number redacted and pod number redacted. And this is all evidence. Uh, query of the 911 calls, DVD footage from AutoZone, DVD footage from Swisher and Sweet Store, inventory number 125622278, photographs, quantity 3. Location of the incident, we've read that. All right, date of death, February 20th, 2012, 2251, pronounced by a Dr. Kebura on February 20th, 2012, 2251, 100 hours. All right, weather and lighting, clear and cool, 45 degrees Fahrenheit, artificial lighting, lighting source, parking lot lights. The method code is a person shot, CAU codes, DNA, other property recovered. It had some fired cartridge cases and some fired bullets. And then they list a the personnel assigned. And of course they have the witness listed here. Seems to be two witnesses, but they only list uh, black in the date of birth year is 1970 for the first one, black 1987 for the second witness. So they still have two witnesses. The next uh, block of information was notification uh, requests. And so in the next section we have an, an investigation and it's quite some redactions on here. So bear with me it is uh, probably more redactions on this than actual text. So just bear with me. I'll try to do my best to get through that. So this is an interview. They interviewed uh, the redacted name, just one person. The date of birth is redacted as well and the year is 83. So going down into the text for the investigation, as I said, the, a lot of this is redacted. So redacted following in essence and not verbatim. Redacted February 16th, 2012. Redacted. Heard gunshots and saw someone shooting a handgun. Redacted. Did not see the offender's face. Redacted. The shooting of ligands. Redacted. This case remains in progress. And this is by detectives. Hold on one. Son of a. All right, the next document we have is another incident report. Um, it's pretty much the same location we listed before. Um, so we'll scroll past that. And of course the victim and the description of the victim and the witnesses are redacted. And the relationship to the victims uh, of the suspects are unknown. Getting down to another narrative, we have an event number 14352 sum in summary. Responding officers responded to an OEMC call of a person shot at the above location. Upon a, a responding officers arrival, Sherrard Liggins' victim and complainant was laying on his side on the sidewalk with a gunshot wound redacted. It was later learned that the victim had redacted wound. Victim was taken by CFD ambulance number 14 to Cook County Hospital with BT313. Following, 
Responding officers spoke redacted. Responding officers then, through the security camera systems, observed the victim leaving Swisher Sweet's store, at which time he was shot. BT-388 spoke to redacted. The victim redacted at Cook County Hospital. And then they list the uh, officers reporting. The next document we have is a handwritten incident report. <coughs> Excuse me, and we'll read that. Event number 04970, responding officer was called to Stroger for a DOA, victim of a gunshot wound. Redacted, DOA, redacted, February 12th at 10.51 hours. Cause of death, redacted, gunshot wound. Pronounced by Dr. Nagy, redacted, Heinz, 69. 10.35, notified Detective Area 2 Sergeant. Allied arrived at 11.2800 hours. The next document we have is another, another progress report in this document was submitted on July 20th, 2014. And we're just scrolling through this document, um, pretty much listing the uh, evidence and um, associations, uh, notifications, and now we're getting down to uh, the progress supplemental report. And this is an interview they interviewed the name is redacted one date of birth the year is 94 and this is an INV alert redacted interviewed at 25th district on June 26 2014 at redacted 25th district officers arrested Dayton Johnson on unrelated traffic offenses and a name check revealed the active investigative alert number redacted no probable cause while Johnson was being processed at the 25th District, our responding detectives signed out the Sherrod Liggins homicide file 12-021 RD number listed from Area Central and interviewed Johnson in the 25th District station. Johnson related the following, not verbatim, that he had many previous addresses including 131 redacted South Rose, 69 redacted South Normal, 6431 South Rose, and, and currently lives at 37 redacted Doug West 13th Street with, with him redacted, excuse me. Johnson related that he moved away from the Rose address after he graduated from high school on June 13, 2014. Johnson redacted. Johnson claims he has no nickname. Re uh, reporting detectives noted numerous tattoos, including redacted. Johnson denied gang affiliation. Johnson denied ever handling a firearm nor even holding one. When confronted with a previous aggravated discharge of a firearm arrest, Johnson maintained that he never handled a gun. Johnson denied having knowledge of any murder and denied knowing anyone named redacted even after being shown two separate photos of Redacted. When confronted with previous statement by, uh, provided by Redacted September 13th, Johnson stated that he did not know Redacted. Johnson maintained that he was not affiliated with any gang. Johnson then stated he knew Redacted. Johnson stated Redacted. Johnson further denied knowledge of any homicide, but explained that when he moved to 64 redacted roads there was a rap war going on between two groups johnson explained that rapping was singing in the in the group songs were offensive to one another johnson would not add anything further johnson was returned to the 25th district lockup and investigative alert uh, number redacted was expired Previous reports state redacted witness to the murder. Responding detectives attempted to contact redacted at the number previously listed. Redacted, which, when called, has no personalized greeting and states mailbox full. A clear search for additional contact information ended with negative results. Reporting detectives attempted to contact the redacted, whose contact information is not listed in any previous reports. A clear search for the contact information was redacted, 
revealed telephone numbers listed in previous reports where Redacted was a victim. Each telephone number listed were not working numbers redacted. Reporting detectives attempted telephone contact attempted telephone contact the victim redacted a previous report which stated the number was redacted. A previous report also stated redacted. Reporting detectives conducted clear searches for additional contact information for redacted ended with negative results. Reporting detectives attempted to contact the victim redacted at previously reported telephone numbers and addresses with negative results. A clear search revealed an additional telephone number redacted which when called has no personalized greeting and responding detectives left a voice message. Redacted not returned re responding detectives telephone call. Previous reports state that the victim redacted. Detectives and related that, sorry, redacted individual that has shot Liggins. Responding detectives seeking to updated contact information for the victim, redacted, issued an investigative alert, redacted, no probable cause to arrest. Responding detectives are also seeking redacted, personal contact information from redacted. Investigative alert number redacted remains active. Previous reports state that redacted was never interviewed. Detective D.D. D. Gorman, Detective B. Letso, Detective S. Del Ribeiro. The next document we have is a case supplementary report. And we're going to breeze through that. And that was submitted on September 16th, 2013. These suspects are still unknown. Uh, male black, scrolling down, past the witnesses. And we come to an investigation on or about September 12, 2013. The reporting detectives received notification from the Illinois State Police Forensic Science Center at Chicago of an IBIS case to case association. The report, the reporting detectives learned that the fired 45 cartridge casings recovered at the murder scene of Sherrod Liggins matched the fired 45 caliber cartridge casings redacted. Refers to the lab report, case supplementary report for additional information. This case remains in progress. All right, and then the next document we have is another progress report. We're just scrolling through some duplicate information that. Uh, we've been through once prior. Okay, so we're down at an investigation, and it reads, this report is to be read in conjunction with all other reports under RD number listed, telephone interview of uh, redacted one, date of birth 84, and the rest is redacted. So this is a telephone interview. On July redacted 15, sporting detectives received a fax from uh, 022nd District PO S. McCabe stating contact was made with redacted IR number redacted under reporting detectives IMV alert redacted the alert was no probable cause to arrest PO McCabe provided contact information for redacted as listed above reporting detective discovered that the listed cell phone for redacted was no longer in service However, on redacted September 15, reporting detectives made phone contact with redacted. Redacted returned responding detectives phone call and related that redacted previously provided to detectives in that redacted heard a subject known as DJ was responsible for the February 16, 2012 murder of Sherrod Liggins. Reporting detectives had previously interviewed a subject known as DJ Dayton jo Johnson, excuse me on June 26, 2014, at the 25th District. Redacted heard that DJ was a victim of a murder, but could not provide anything further. Reporting detectives searched department records for Dayton Johnson. The, subject, the same subject reporting detectives previously interviewed. The search, this search revealed that Dayton Johnson was arrested as recent as July 23, 2015, and was in custody at the most recent court hearing 
on September 2nd, 2015. Reporting detectives cell phone number and reporting detectives obliged. Redacted contact reporting detectives upon learning the identities of any eyewitnesses to the Liggins murder. When providing redacted with re responding detectives cell phone number, reporting detectives could see, could hear, excuse me, hear, I think that is word, but it's kind of redacted. It's H-E-A and then there's redaction after that. Manually inputting the number into the keypad of the phone. The phone was disconnected. There was no call back from redacted nor was return responding detectives return calls go answered. IMV alert number redacted was expired. Going on to our next document, we have another progress report. And we're going through that in hopes to find the investigation. Here we are on July 29th, 2013. The reporting detectives learned that redacted, we pick up here, regarding the murder of Sherrod Liggins. The reporting detectives will interview redacted in the next several weeks at the CCDOC. On August 3rd, 2013, the reporting detectives contacted Liggins, redacted, no additional information regarding the murder, redacted. The reporting detectives learned that redacted and now has the following uh, contact information, excuse me. Uh, redaction in this case remains in progress. And that's the end of that document, progress report. And we have another progress report following that. And this one was filed on September 8th, 2013. And we're gonna scroll down through this one. All right, and they interviewed someone and the name is redacted and the birth date is redacted. Uh, well, sorry about that. The um, gender is redacted and it is one person, 23. Nickname redacted, date of birth, uh, month and day are redacted, the year is 90. And we're starting at an investigation on this document page on redacted September 13 at redacted, the reporting detectives res interviewed redacted regarding the murder of Sherrod Liggins Redacted the following in essence and not verbatim. Responding, the responding detective showed redacted photographs of Liggins, redacted new Liggins, redacted learned of Liggins' death from a posting, redacted stated that redacted. The responding detective showed redacted a photograph of Dayton Johnson, redacted DJ, redacted Johnson, did not shoot Liggins and redacted did not know who shot Liggins. Redacted regarding this murder, redacted this case remains in progress. And we have another progress report going through. And associations, we have another interview coming up. It's just one individual they're listing. Date of birth is redacted, except for 89, which is the year. And we have an investigation on September redacted, 2013. The reporting detectives interview redacted. During this interview, the reporting detectives learned that Sherrod Liggins redacted. The reporting detectives located redacted interview redacted September 13 at redacted hours. O oh, redacted. Redacted the following in essence and not verbatim. Redacted Liggins going on between the Black Disciples, BDs, and the Gangster Disciples, GDs. Redacted. Redacted Liggins murder. Redacted. Heard that a male Black known as DJ was the shooter. Redacted. Heard that a male Black known as Tutu was the shooter. Redacted that Tutu had been killed on May 13th, 2012. Redacted did not know DJ's or Tutu's real names. The responding detectives returned to Area South and attempted to identify Tutu with no success. There were only two homicides recorded on May 13th, 2012, and both occurred on the north side of the city. The responding detectives checked all homicides that occurred in May 2012 and they were unable to identify Tutu. 
No murders in May 2012 were in the vicinity of Ligon's murder. The reporting detectives looked at that murders looked at murders in April 2012 and learned that on 28th of April, an individual named was mur- uh, Monroe was murdered under RD number listed. Although Monroe's nickname was D, he was a member of the Eberhard Boys, which was a street which was the street gang that was alleged to have been responsible for the Ligon's murder. On November 3, 2013, the reporting detectives initiated an investigative alert with no probable cause to arrest for Dayton Johnson, IR number redacted. Johnson was nicknamed DJ and Liggins redacted, heard redacted that DJ was the individual that had shot Liggins. The responding detectives had checked both the Illinois Department of Corrections and the Cook County Department of Corrections to ensure that Johnson was not incarcerated. The reporting detectives learned that it appeared that Johnson had moved to the west side of the city, redacted. This case remains in progress. And the next document we have is a lab report. A field, this is a field investigation lab report. Report. All right, and we'll scroll down to some information. And we have an investigation. On August 26, 2013, the Illinois State Police Forensic Science Center at Chicago generated a laboratory report regarding the murder of Sherrod Liggins. The results of this laboratory report is as follows. The following evidence was received by the Forensic Science Center at Chicago on the 22nd of February 2012. And they have some inventory, it seems. They had uh, one, two, three, four, five. A 45 caliber cartridge case, fired cartridge case, was examined, and their findings were well. They they ex- they examined exhibits number four, exhibit number five, exhibit number six, and exhibit number seven, and exhibit number eight from the evidence. And exhibits number four through eight were fired in the same firearm. With the assistance of the IBIS database, an association was made between the fired cartridge case in exhibit number four of redacted and the fired cartridge case in exhibit number eight of redacted. Exhibits number two through number 11 of redacted were fired in the same firearm as exhibits number four through number eight. Remarks C11-4195, RD number is listed, was previously identified to redacted Based on an inquiry directed to the er area evidence coordinator and the detective's analysis on inventories numbers listed has been deferred at this time. Further analysis on these items must be accompanied by a new request. This case remains in progress. Scrolling down to the next document, we have another progress report. And now we have an investigation, uh, excuse me, from an interview, and everything is redacted. There's, <coughs> excuse me, one individual whose date of birth is uh, redacted except for the year, which is 59. And we have an investigation on March 21st, 2012. Redacted was stopped by Beat 306A for drinking on the public way. A name check was conducted on Redacted, and it was discovered that he had an investigative alert with no probable cause for arrest. IA number Redacted regarding the homicide of Sherrod Liggins. Redacted was a possible witness. Redacted agreed to talk to the reporting detectives, and Redacted was transported to Area South. Redacted the following in essence and not verbatim. Redacted that on 16 February 12, Redacted heard numerous gunshots. Redacted, not witnessed the shooting, and redacted, did not hear who was responsible for the murder of Liggins. This case remains in progress. And we go to the next document. It's another uh, supplementary report, progress report. This one was submitted on March 15th, 2012. All right. We're scrolling through that. Let's see these documents to get to. 
here and there we go we have an investigation with some injuries gunshot wound redacted pronounced february 20th 2012 at 2251 hours this must be in re relation to the victim uh, photographs o slash a and c slash u identification photographs front left and right profile of sherrod liggins and they have evidence inventory <coughs> excuse me they have a blood card from Sherrod Liggins inventory, two copies of DVD video footage from pod numbers, um, some 911 calls. All right. And <coughs> excuse me, let's go back up some. Seems they have some new inventory, one black and white photograph of DJ, one black and white photograph of redacted, one black and white photograph of DJ pointing a handgun right there so we'll scroll down and when they interviewed uh, several witnesses it seems male 127 all right we have a 50 uh, date of birth of 53 we have a date of birth of 93 date of birth of 63 year these are all years the year of birth a date of birth of 56 a date of birth of 76 a date of birth of year 85 and a date of birth of year 70 all right, and then we're at another investigation. On February 17th, 2012, second watch detectives beat 5213, Detective Braun, number 20810, and Detective Bracer, number 20802, obtained video footage from the AutoZone. Additionally, Detective Braun and Detective Racer met with P.O. Osuna from the CPD OCD Tech Lab and obtained a working copy of the footage captured by Swisher and Sweets. P.O. Osuna told the detectives that he would make copies of the DVD from both the AutoZone and Swisher and & Suites, and they would be available to pick up the following day. On February 17, 2012, the reporting detectives contacted Redacted, a witness to the shooting, and interviewed Redacted. Redacted the following, in essence and not verbatim. Redacted, both of the male blacks looked young and between, age, between 16 and 18 years of age, redacted. One of the male blacks, offender number one, was tall and wore a black jacket and beige cargo pants, redacted. Offender number two was about five feet to five feet three tall and wore a jacket that was gray and black, mostly gray. Two, no good, redacted. Offender number two, and then there's a big redaction block after that. And a couple uh, about a paragraph of redaction and we pick up in another paragraph at the words then heard gunshots and then we have some more redaction and we pick back up at talk to a police officer and then we have some more redaction and we pick up at shooter had to have been offender number one and then there's some more redaction and we pick up on the next page of the document the reporting detective submitted an evidence submission form to the Illinois State Police Forensic Science Center at Chicago to have the recovered fired cartridge cases and the recovered fired bullets examined. On February redacted 2012 at redacted hours, the reporting detectives located redacted, interviewed redacted, the reporting detectives identified redacted, the responding detectives recognized redacted. Redacted following in essence and not verbatim. Redacted heard numerous gunshots. Redacted did not see the shooting. Disciples, STLGDs, were responsible for the murder of Liggins. Redacted, Liggins, when he was shot. Redacted, did not hear who was responsible for the murder. Redacted, Liggins, when he was shot. Redacted, heard that the GDs from Everhart or Rose were responsible for the murder of Liggins. After interviewing Redacted, the reporting detectives redacted. The reporting detectives spoke redacted. The reporting detectives attempted to locate redacted. Shots were fired. The reporting detectives were unsuccessful in locating them. The reporting detectives attempted to re-interview redacted. The reporting detectives called redacted. The reporting detectives left a message redacted. The reporting detective then attempted to locate redacted. No one was home. The reporting detectives returned to area two, a redacted, IR number redacted. On February redacted 2012, the reporting detect detectives attempted to locate redacted. The reporting detectives were not able to identify what company managed the property. The reporting detectives returned to the redacted and conducted another canvas. 
Refer to the Canvas Case Supplemental Report for the results. On February 20, 2012, Liggins expired from his injuries. Liggins was pronounced by Dr. Kabua at 2251 hours at Stroger Hospital. Liggins was assigned medical examiner case number redacted. On February 21, 2012, Area 2 HDS Supervisor Sergeant Big took a message from an individual that identified redacted, told Sergeant Big redacted, heard from anonymous individuals on the street that DJ and Butter were responsible for the shoot for shooting Liggins. Redacted, Sergeant Big that redacted heard that DJ was the shooter. The reporting detectives were unable to determine who DJ and Butter were. On February 22, 2012, Dr. McGillicott performed an autopsy on the remains of Sherrod Liggins and determined the cause and manner of death to be gunshot wound of head slash homicide. On February 23, 2012, the reporting detectives went to the CPD OCD tech lab and obtained four copies of video footage from Swisher and & Suites and four copies of footage from AutoZone. The DVD labels and, and the manila sleeves that the DVDs were in were mislabeled, i.e. DVDs labeled Swisher & Suites are AutoZone and vice versa. The reporting detectives inventoried the original and two copies of each DVD. The reporting detectives placed a DVD of each in the homicide file. The reporting detectives viewed the video footage from the auto zone and the camera mounted on the east wall facing face north so it did not capture the sh shooting. Excuse me. The reporting detectives viewed the video footage from Swisher and Suites on February 16, 2012. On February 24, 2012, Detective Sullivan contacted Redacted and interviewed Redacted information about DJ and Butter from an unknown individual on the street. On February 24, 2012, the responding detectives received a supplemental report that had a contact number for Redacted. The reporting detectives called Redacted and interviewed Redacted. All right, and Redacted, following in essence and not verbatim, Redacted recognized the shooters if Redacted saw them again. Redacted no further information about this. And there's a redacted block underneath that. On March redacted 2012, the reporting detectives located re redacted was interviewed. Redacted, the following in essence and not verbatim. Um, redacted, redacted saw two male blacks walking southbound down the alley before the shooting. Redacted, individual shoot, hand the gun to the other individual and then he shot. Redacted, two offenders then ran. Redacted. After interviewing Redacted, the reporting detectives attempted to locate Redacted with no success. The reporting detectives left their business card Redacted. On March 4, 2012, Detective Sullivan viewed the video footage from pod number Redacted and pod number Redacted. The reporting detectives observed nothing relevant on these DVDs. Detective Sullivan then listened to 911 calls and the OEMC transmissions from February 16, 2012. No additional information was obtained. On March Redacted 2012, Redacted called Detective Sullivan and stated that Redacted and that the re responding detective should look A. Redacted. The responding detective asked Redacted the information since the reporting detective had a difficult time hearing Redacted sent the information redacted the reporting detectives viewed redacted comments were hostile but there was nothing written that could implicate redacted in Ligon's murder on March redacted 2012 the reporting detectives had a message that redacted called with information on the Ligon's murder the reporting detectives called redacted reporting detectives Reporting the reporting detectives met redacted. Redacted following in essence and not verbatim, redacted assist the reporting detectives with any information that redacted obtained. Redacted DJ was the individual that shot Liggins. A redacted shooter was targeting Liggins. Redacted DJ turned his head when he shot the handgun. Redacted. Redacted gave the reporting detectives three photos that redacted of Facebook. 
One was a photo redacted. The second was a photo of DJ, and the third was a photo of DJ pointing a handgun. Redacted did not know DJ's name, but he would attempt to find out. After interviewing Redacted, the reporting detectives went to the vacant lot in an attempt to locate and interview the three individuals that were in the alley slash vacant lot repairing vehicles when the shooting occurred. The reporting detectives located Redacted. Redacted heard gunshots. Redacted not see the shooters or the shooting. Redacted. The reporting detectives returned to Area 2 and checked I clear for Redacted DJ. The reporting detectives identified redacted, IR number redacted. The reporting detectives believe that DJ is redacted, IR number redacted, also known by the nickname Day Day. On March redacted 2012, the reporting detectives went to redacted in an attempt to locate redacted. The shooting occurred. The reporting detectives spoke to redacted. The reporting detectives left their business card <clears throat> excuse me the reporting detectives went to redacted interviewed redacted following in essence and not verbatim and then we have a big redaction block underneath of that and we have it say we pick back up at redaction heard five or more gunshots but that redaction did not see the shooter redaction block after that after interviewing Redaction, the reporting detect detectives attempted to locate Redaction with no success. The reporting detectives left their business card. At Redacted hours, Redacted contacted Detective Sullivan and Redacted was interviewed telephonically. Redacted essence and not verbatim, Redacted. Redacted numerous gunshots were fired. Redacted ligands went down to the ground. Redacted not know where the gunshots came from, Redacted. Redacted. The reporting detectives initiated investigative alerts for Redacted. Witnessed the shooting. Additionally, the reporting detectives initiated an investigative alert for Redacted. This case remains in process. Progress. Excuse me. Let me go down to the next document. This is a field investigation progress. <coughs> excuse me. Violence scene report. Let me go through some of this information. And we'll scroll down till we see some new information. And all right, we have an investigation. We have the victim, of course, uh, Sherrod Liggins, male 119. And now they have four wanted unknown black males. And they have offender number one, tall, wearing a black jacket and beige cargo pants. Offender number two, shorter, wearing a gray or in black checkered jacket and blue jeans. Offender number three, unknown. Offender number four, unknown. Injuries, gunshot wound to the head. Redacted, taken to John Stroger Hospital. CFD ambulance number 14. Weapon was a 45 caliber handgun. Uh, manner and motive, victim was shot in the head after exiting a store slash gang related. And they have pods, uh, footage from two pods requested from 1830 to 1900 hours. And they have photographs that they took from the crime scene. And some evidence, inventory evidence. Uh, all right. Cartridge casings. Bullet fragments. And then personnel assigned. And they have some more people they interviewed. This would be one person born in the year of 91, somebody born in the year of 57, and we have another investigation. On February 16, 2012, the reporting detectives were assigned to investigate an aggravated battery with a handgun that occurred at Redacted by Area 2 HDS Supervisor with a hand, uh, excuse me, Sergeant David Wright, number 1336, at 1925 hours. The reporting detectives were told that the victim, Sherrod Liggins, had been shot in the head and was taken to Stroger Hospital by CFD Ambulance Number 14. The reporting detectives went to the scene. The reporting detectives arrived at the redacted and saw a yellow crime scene tape quartering off the crime scene from redacted. South 
Drive, Martin Luther South Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. The reporting detectives observed Dr. Martin Luther King Drive to be a two-way, four-lane, busy street that traveled north and south. On the west side of Dr. Martin Luther King Drive was a large two-block-long apartment complex known as Parkway Gardens. On the east side of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive was a large parking lot that had one business on the north side of the lot, which was AutoZone. Uh, and they have the address. The south side of the lot had four businesses from west to east. Cecily Pizza, Unit A, Cricket, Unit B, and Swisher and & Sweets, Unit C, and a beauty supply, Unit D. All four businesses had this, had the address uh, listed. Swisher & Sweets was located at, the address is listed. The reporting detectives also observed that a large wooden fence, approximately six feet high, secured the entire side of the lot from the alley. This alley was, a, was located between Dr. Martin Luther King Drive and Vernon, which was located one block east of Dr. Martin Luther King Drive. The reporting detectives met by one of the reporting officers, P.O. O'Kason, in the parking lot. O'Kason was interviewed. P.O. O'Kason stated the following, in essence and not verbatim, O'Kason stated that he and his partner were assigned to respond to a man shot in front of a store. O'Kason stated that when they arrived, he saw a male black, now known as Liggins, lying on his side on the sidewalk in front of the Swisher and Swiss grocery store. O'Kason uh, stated that Liggins had a gunshot wound to the back of his head. O'Kason uh, stated that Liggins was not very responsive and could not answer any questions. O'Kasanen stated that one of the police officers on the scene interviewed a redacted black in the alley who identified black, uh, redank, redacted, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me for that, sorry, that, who identified redacted. O'Kasanen stated that redacted saw two male blacks in the alley, redacted. O'Kasanen stated that redacted the officer that one of the male blacks then fired a handgun over the fence westbound into the lot. Redacted offender number one as being a tall male black wearing a black jacket and beige cargo pants. Offender number two was a male black who was shorter than shorter that offender number one. Offender number two was wearing a gray and black checkered jacket and blue jeans. Oksanen stated that Redacted did not know which offender was the shooter. Oksanen stated that the officer that interviewed Redacted's cell phone number and Redacted date of birth. Oksanen stated that Redacted, Oksanen stated that there were five cartridge cases in the alley that appeared to be 45 caliber. Beat 5822 E.T. Norris was already at the scene and he showed the reporting detectives the evidence that he had identified. The reporting detectives observed a large pool of very vicious blood on the sidewalk and the group, the ground, excuse me, and the ground of the parking lot just west of the entrance to the Swisher Suites. The reporting detectives observed the large glass window in the front of Swisher Suites to have several holes due to bullets. The reporting detectives observed two bullet fragments on the sidewalk in front of Swisher and Suites. One bullet fragment caught between the double pane glass. One bullet fragment stuck on the brick wall several feet up from the ground and one bullet fragment trapped in the window molding several feet up from the ground. The reporting detectives went to the alley and also saw that it was cordoned off with crime scene tape from 64th Street to approximately 64 Redacted South Dr. Martin Luther King Drive. The reporting detective, uh, excuse me, detectives observed redacted cartridge cases on the ground north of the stores located at, and the address is listed, the shooter had to shoot in a west in a southwest direction at Liggins. The reporting detectives observed two of the boards in the fence to have gaps, and the reporting detectives observed a piece of the top of one of the boards appeared to have been damaged when the handgun was fired. The reporting detectives learned that both the AutoZone and Swisher Suites had security cameras. The reporting detectives were told that the redacted of the auto zone would have to be contacted regarding obtaining footage from the camera since they did not have the ability to view a copy of the footage at the individual stores. The reporting detectives observed the footage of the cameras at Swisher and Suites. The camera located at the back south side of the store captured activity in the south gangway 
and the alley. Due to it being so dark, the footage was not clear. The reporting de detectives observed four male blacks in the gangway behind the store. They appeared to be moving back and forth westbound and eastbound several times. They were also observed going into the alley. The reporting detectives saw individuals move northbound out of the view of the camera and then southbound after the shots were fired. The camera in front of the store showed Liggins when he was shot. The redacted allowed the CPD OCD tech lab to retrieve the video footage from the store on February 17, 2012. The reporting detectives also learned that one of the fire bullets traveled across Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and went through a redacted. No one was struck and Beat 5822 later recovered the bullet. The reporting detectives le uh, learned that there were redacted had not seen anything redacted, the officer obtained their contact information. Additionally, the reporting detectives learned that a witness now known as redacted. The reporting detectives attempted to contact redacted with no success. The reporting detectives left a message on redacted phone. The reporting detectives conducted a canvas on the stores on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and on Vernon. The re responding detectives interviewed redacted. All right, and redacted the following in essence and not verbatim, and we have a big redaction block, and the only thing that is not, words that are not redacted are firing a handgun, period. All right, going down, the reporting detectives obtained no additional investigative leads from the canvas. Beat 5822 photographed the scene and recovered all the evidence except for the bullet fragment that had been trapped in the window molding. This fragment fell down into the window molding and was unable to be recovered. While the responding detectives were at the scene, Beat 5216 Detective John Otto went to Stroger Hospital and learned that Liggins redacted. Detective Otto learned that a bullet entered Liggins in the back of his head and redacted. Detective Otto learned that redacted. And then we have another uh, statement, but it seems to be completely redacted. After the scene was processed and the canvas complete, the reporting detectives returned to Area 2 and interviewed Redacted. And we have Redacted, the following in essence and not verbatim. And then the next word we have is Liggins, and then the rest is Redacted. And then we pick back up at the reporting detectives checked the vicinity of the crime scene for pods and ordered the footage from a pod located at 63rd Street in Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. And the footage from a pod located at 64th Street in Eberhard. The rep responding detectives also ordered the 911 and the OEMC transmissions regarding the shooting, and this case remains in progress. So we go down to the next page document, and it is a field investigation progress report. And we'll see if there's any more information here. As we scroll through. And we are at an investigation. They interviewed one individual who was born in the year of 83. And the investigation starts off with two big redaction blocks in the words, the shooting of Liggins is not redacted. And then there's a redaction block under that. And then it reads, this case remains in progress. And so we're scrolling down to the next document. And this is a field investigation progress violent scene report. And we'll scroll down to see what we have here. And they have the victim listed and they have wanted and it's redacted now. <coughs> Excuse me. And the injuries are a gunshot wound to the head. And it says redacted head, redacted head over the right eye. And we're right. Manner and motive, victim was shot in the head after exiting a store. And then they have the pod footage and photographs and their evidence listed. And they interviewed a couple more people, <coughs> excuse me. And they do have an investigation. On February redacted, the reporting detectives were assigned to investigate an aggravated battery with a handgun that occurred at 64 Redacted South Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Area 2, HGS, Supervisor Sergeant David Wright. The reporting detectives were told that the victim, Sherrod Liggins, had been shot in the head and was taken to Stroger Hospital by CFD Ambulance Number 14. 
The responding detectives went to the scene. The responding detectives arrived at the 64 redacted block of South Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and saw yellow crime scene tape quartering off, <coughs> excuse me, crime scene from 64 redacted to 64 redacted South Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. The reporting detectives observed Dr. Martin Luther King Drive to be a two-way, four-lane, busy street that traveled north and south. On the west side of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive was a large two-block-long apartment complex now known as Parkway Gardens. On the east side of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive was a parking lot that had one business on the north side of the lot, which was AutoZone. Which was the auto zone was a large parking lot that had oh sorry with the 64 in the list of address the south side of the lot had four businesses from west to east sicily pizza cricket swisher of sweets and a beauty supply store all right all four businesses had the same address swisher and sweets was located at 64 redacted south dr martin luther king jr drive the reporting detectives also observed that a large wooden fence approximately six feet high secured the entire side east side of the lot from the alley this alley was located between dr martin luther king jr drive and burning which is located one block east of dr martin luther king jr drive the responding detectives were met by one of the reporting officers po a second at um in the parking lot Os osankin it was interviewed excuse me Okay, P.O. Oksanen stated the following in essence and not verbatim. Oksanen stated that he and his partner were assigned to respond to a man shot in the front of a store. Oksanen stated that when they arrived, he saw a male black, now known as Liggins, lying on his side and on the sidewalk in front of the Swisher Sweets grocery store. Oksanen stated that Liggins had a gunshot wound to the back of his head. Oksanen stated that Liggins was not very responsive and could not answer any questions. Oksana stated that one of the police officers on the scene interviewed Redacted in the alley who identified Redacted. Oksana stated Redacted told the officer Redacted. Oksana stated Redacted the officer that one of the male blacks then fired a handgun over the fence westbound into the lot. Redacted described officer n offender excuse me number one as being a tall male black wearing a black jacket and beige cargo pants. Offender number two was a male black who was shorter than then offender number one. Offender number two was wearing gray and black checkered jacket and blue jeans. Oksana stated Redacted did not know which offender was the shooter. Oksana stated that the officer then that interviewed Redacted. Redacted. Oksana stated that Redacted responding to detectives arrival. Oksana stated that the, there were five cartridge cases in the alley that appeared to be 45 caliber. B5822 ET Norris 196 a6 was already at the scene and he showed the reporting detectives the evidence that he had identified the reporting detective observed a redacted blood on the sidewalk and the ground of, of the parking lot just west of the entrance of to the swisher suites swisher and suites the reporting detectives detectives observed the large glass window in front of swisher and suites to have several several holes due to bullets the reporting detectives observed two bullet fragments on the sidewalk in front of Swisher and Sweets. One bullet fragment caught between the double pane glass, one bullet fragment stuck on the brick wall several feet up from the ground, and one bullet fragment trapped in the window molding several feet up from the ground. And yep, the reporting detectives went to the alley and also saw that it was cordoned off with the crime scene tape from 64th Street to approximately 64 redacted South Dr. Martin Luther King Drive. The reporting detectives observed five cartridge cases on the ground north of the stores located at 64 Redacted South Dr. Martin Luther King Drive. The, excuse me, find that. The shooters had to shoot in a southwest direction at Liggins. The reporting detectives observed two of the boards and the fence to have gaps, and the reporting detectives observed a piece of the top of one of the boards appeared to have been damaged when the handgun was fired. The reporting detectives learned that both AutoZone and Swisher Suite had security cameras. The reporting detectives were told that district manager of the AutoZone would have to be contacted regarding obtaining the footage from the camera since they did not have the ability to view a copy of the footage at the individual stores. All right, the reporting detectives observed the footage of the camera at Swisher and Suites. 
Camera located at the back south side of the store captured activity in the south gangway and in the alley. Due to it being so dark, the footage was not clear. The reporting detectives observed four male blacks in the gangway behind uh, the store. Excuse me. They appeared to be moving back and forth westbound and eastbound several times. They were also observed going into the alley. The reporting detectives saw individuals move northbound out of the view of the camera and then southbound after the shots were fired. The camera in the front of the store showed Liggins when he was shot. The owner stated that he would allow CPD OCD Tech Lab to retrieve vi the video footage from the store on February 17, 2012. The reporting detectives also learned that one of the fired bullets traveled across Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and went through a redacted window at Redacted. No one was struck and beat 5822 later recovered the bullet. The reporting detectives learned that there were redacted mechanics that were hanging out in a vacant lot at 64 Redacted South Vernon. Redacted individuals told an officer that they had not seen anything. None of these individuals were still there. The officer obtained their contact information. Additionally, the responding detectives learned that a witness redacted. The reporting detectives attempted to contact redacted with no success. The responding detectives left a message redacted. The responding detectives conducted a canvas of the stores on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and on Vernon. The responding detectives interviewed redacted. Redacted following in essence and not verbatim. Redacted the vacant lot when redacted male blacks then ran southbound down the alley and then eastbound through a vacant lot towards Vernon redacted the reporting detectives obtained no additional investigative leads from the canvas B5822 photographed the scene and recovered all the evidence except for the bullet fragment that had been trapped in the window molding the fragment fell down into the window molding and was unable to be recovered while the reporting detectives were at the scene Beat 5216, Detective John Otto went to Stroger Hospital and learned that Liggins redacted. Detective Otto learned that a bullet entered Liggins in the back of his head and redacted. Detective Otto learned that redacted. And then we have a redaction, essence and not verbatim. And then there's redaction. After this scene was processed, the canvas complete, the re responding detectives returned to area two and interviewed redacted. And we have a redaction following in essence and not verbatim. And we have a bunch of redaction heard about five to six shots. And then we have a bunch more redaction and more redaction. And it says the reporting detectives checked the vicinity of the crime scene for pods and ordered the footage from a pod located at 63rd Street and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and the footage from a pod located at 64th Street in Everhart. The reporting detectives also ordered the 911 calls and the OEMC transmissions regarding the shooting. This case remains in progress. Detective William Sullivan, Detective, Detective Michelle Moore Gross. And that takes us to the end of this document. And I believe there is a second document, but <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go ahead and stop it there. So if you haven't already, definitely subscribe, subscribe, subscribe for part two. We will be going into that, um, but we're going to go ahead and cut it here. Thank you for watching. I appreciate everybody, and definitely hit that subscribe button. Peace.